There's always a lot of curiosity about what apps people use in their PhDs. Honestly, I am curious about this as well when I find out that people are doing PhDs and it's, it's justifiable. Everyone does different work in their PhDs, so we use these different programming languages, different editors, different other random bits of software that I don't know about. So in this video, I'm going to try and answer that for my work as an astrophysics PhD student at Cardiff University. Before we go any further, please make sure to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. First off, I am an astrophysics PhD student, which means this is going to be very science based, very programming based. So if that's not what you're here for, I hope you enjoy it, but it might not be the most useful thing for you. And before we go any further, I have one ground rule for this video. Please keep it civil. We're not having the fights about what is the best operating system, the best programming language. It's completely counterproductive. I don't want to see anyone in the comment section ridiculing anyone else's software program languages or choice of operating system. Additionally, I'm not being paid to promote any of the software I'm going to talk about in this video, with the one exception being Notion. I'm a Notion affiliate, which means if you sign up to their plus plan with the link in the video description, I get a small kickback, but I used Notion well before I became a Notion affiliate and all of the software here I use every single day. So let's get started. I do computational astrophysics and a lot of what I do, as much as I work with simulations, is data analysis, which means I do a lot of coding in Python. I actually talked a bit about how I use code in the PhD in a recent video that will be linked in the top right hand corner, but let's talk about how I write it. I use an IDE. This is an editor with some added on extra bits. Specifically, what I use is the JetBrains suite. Specifically for my work with Python, PyCharm. PyCharm is basically a text editor with a load of extra features, so it will check that your code makes any sense, it will be able to link to version control, things like GitHub, but it's not the only one. I use PyCharm for Python, I use IntelliJ IDEA, another JetBrains IDE, for anything else like Fortran or writing LaTeX, but there are alternatives. Good one is VS Code, that's used by quite a lot of people as well, because PyCharm, it's not free, I get it with an educational license. There is a free version, but it's not quite as full-featured, um, but it's what I like. I could use VS Code, but I like PyCharm. Along with that, the code that I run is rather heavy. I cannot run it on my laptop, which means I run it on a remote machine. I run it on a machine owned by my university, Cardiff University, and that means I need to connect to it. Now, I can connect from my JetBrains IDE. I can write code on there and run code on there from that, but there are some cases where I just want to be able to work with purely a command line. So since I'm on Windows, I use PowerShell, specifically using the Windows subsystem for Linux. This is basically a way of running Linux commands inside a Windows operating system. There are some programs that I need Windows for, such as the Adobe suite for my content creation stuff, and honestly just for gaming. I don't want to be switching between Linux and Windows, and for what I do, Windows subsystem for Linux works really well. If all you need to do is a little bit of working with remote terminals, it's much easier than working with just the base like Windows terminal. So I'd highly recommend it if you're on Windows and just have to do a bit here and there. I mentioned earlier that I use LaTeX and that specifically I write it in IntelliJ IDEA. So IntelliJ IDEA is another IDE from the JetBrains suite. LaTeX is a typesetting language. It's used a lot in the sciences, particularly in physics, maths, computer science, where we have a lot of equations or diagrams or things like that that we need to put into uh, papers and reports and such. It's a typesetting language. When I'm offline, I'd write it in IDEA. When I'm online, when I'm say in my office at the university or at home, I will use Overleaf, which is an online service. The reason I don't use it all the time is because you have to be online to use it, which means if we've got to write something on, on the move, whether that's in a coffee shop or on a train, it's a nightmare. Fortunately, it does have a good GitHub integration, so I link it through GitHub, download it onto my laptop, and I can write locally offline and then sync it all back up again, and it works really well. It's also got collaborative features, which my fellow PhD students use. They can send versions of their paper to the supervisor. They can look at, the, look at them and give comments on the paper and get it all back without having to have like 16 different emails back and forth just to make minor changes, which is honestly great. I am actually looking forward to seeing how that works when I get that far, but I've not written a paper yet. So that largely covers what I use to get my job done. Now let's have a quick chat about how I keep myself organized. A PhD is a huge endeavor. There's a lot to it. There's so many different moving parts and being able to keep track of everything PhD side as well as everything else in my life, like content creation and, you know, just having work-life separation and the house being tidy. I have a lot of organizational stuff that I have to keep track of. And for that, I use a combination of Notion 
and Microsoft Excel. Now, Excel may seem like an odd choice given, you know, it's a spreadsheet software, but I use it for my main to-do list. I've tried other apps like Microsoft To Do, and I just find them difficult to work with. I just find it a bit like irritating. Whereas Excel currently works. I'd like to find a better solution. I'm trying to migrate some of my longer term projects over into Notion, but I haven't found a good solution to everything yet. If anyone has any good suggestions for how to organize things better, I need like a to-do list where I can keep track of progress, deadlines and everything. And I'm, I just haven't found the right one for me yet. In Notion, that's actually where I do a lot of my stuff with my content creation stuff, uh, like YouTube and Twitch and Instagram links are obviously in the description, but there is also an aspect to it in my work as a PhD student. I use it for tracking longer term projects. I use it for career planning. I use it for all that sort of high level stuff. It isn't, however, where I do all my note taking. Note taking for me, obviously it happens in like physical notes I write in a notebook, but there are some things I wanna keep more permanent or update very frequently. And for that, I will use Obsidian. Obsidian is basically a wrapper for just a bunch of files, like markdown typeset files. And it's great because it means that if Obsidian ever stops working or stops being supported or just gives up, I can just take all of my files and move them somewhere else and use them there, which is great. It also means that I have it backed up to a GitHub repository, a private one, that lets me get around their $6 a month-ish um, sync service. Just don't bother with that, just use GitHub. Um, but Obsidian is great. I think it's really interesting. You can link different notes to each other if they have, say, common themes, or if you've got, like, for me, I have a work record, and then I'll link to where I have the notes from different meetings. I think it works really well. It's a really interesting way to work, and you can connect everything up with, like, mathematical graphs, which is fun. Um, but yeah, Obsidian is how I take my sort of day-to-day -day notes and then notions where I keep the sort of overarching project management stuff. That will bring us to the last couple of apps. I've mentioned Zotero in a fairly recent video. It's a reference manager. It helps me keep track of papers and what I've read, what's important for each project, and does all the generating of citations for papers when I come to write them. And then finally, the one app that I just cannot live without as a PhD student. It's an odd one. It's Spotify. <laughs> I can't do the whole silence thing. My brain does not work like that. Spotify is in use just about every minute of every day that I'm working. So yeah, Spotify is probably the one that would be the most disruptive if I didn't have access to it. I know there's other music apps, but I've been using Spotify for so long that I, I don't know, is it Stockholm Syndrome? Is it Sunk Cost Fallacy? I don't know, but I use that as well. So that is all of the apps and services that I use in my PhD in astrophysics. If there is any that you use or that you think are better, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. While you're there, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and make sure you keep it civil in the comment section. There are merits to every software, every coding language, every operating system, even, even MATLAB. So keep it civil down there. I don't want to have to see the whole Windows Linux fight. I will delete those comments. So thank you all for watching. If you'd like to watch something else, there is some recommended viewing on screen. Now come join us in the Discord where you can chat about stuff and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.